Hey, I hope you guys are having a great Friday. I wanted to come on today. There's been just a lot of questions, a lot of uh, people who are asking for support, asking for opinions, asking for um, just uh, throwing out there and asking for just feedback about um, they're having doubts about the divorce. Now, this is strictly for people who have already made the decision, who've already gone through their divorce, and now they're kind of looking back, or maybe they're in the midst of the divorce, but they have decided um, that they're going to end their marriage. And this is a video for you, for women who may be feeling some doubt, may be kind of looking back and saying, you know, was this the right thing to do? And so let me just give you my own testimony. And I think that that would be very helpful to you, uh, helpful to a, just a lot of women either watching this live or watching the tape version. I was, many of you know I was married for 19 years and I had all kind of craziness happening <laughs> in my relationship. Um, there were things that were going on it, when he, I can't even say they were so much behind the scenes, but there were things that, um, behaviors that were going on, things that were going on on the computer, on the internet, all kind of stuff that um, was absolutely detrimental and cancerous to our relationship and did not respect our marriage. And so, you know, I kept asking, kept asking, kept asking, you know, is this going to change? are you going to change you know are you going to think about stopping this behavior because it is just absolutely toxic to our relationship and I know there's some things I need to, to work on too I'm not saying that I was patty perfect I certainly wasn't but I was not um, doing anything that uh, was considered to be you know showing interest in anybody else it was you know was nothing like that going on um, yeah, I had some things, I had some probably some anger issues I needed to work through. There probably were some um, just other areas that I needed to mature in, but it had nothing to do with having somebody else you know, on the outside of our relationship, anything like that. Um, and so, you know, if his attention is always turned away from our relationship and not making any type of effort to work on, work on the relationship or work on himself, it really wasn't a whole lot a place to go from there. There really isn't a place to go from there, to be honest. And so, you know, the question became, okay, you know, what are you, you going to do? And sometimes you just really need to get to that place in your mind where you know that you know that you know it's not going to change. It's not going to change. And I believe that in my own relationship, when you get to the point where you realize that nothing's going to change and you feel that release, okay, I'm not responsible for this person pursuing their own healing. I'm responsible for, for pursuing my own healing, but I'm not responsible for trying to make him do anything. You know, I'm only responsible for what I do, the healing that I'm going to, pr going to go after, and the things that I know that I need to work on. And if that relationship is detrimental, then um, you know what? Sorry, if that relationship is detrimental to you, then you know I think that you can let go of the doubt of really thinking. You know, would things would things have changed? You know, if over and over and over and over again, time after time after time, asking over and over again, are you willing to work on this? Are you? What are you willing to do? And the answer is always no. And they still continue to turn and get deeper into the things that are toxic to your relationship. You know, it comes to a point where self-preservation has to kick in. And sometimes when we get a little bit of time away from that, sometimes we forget the feelings that we had. Sometimes we forget the situation that we had. Sometimes we forget how toxic it was to us. And you know you you deserve to to be emotionally healthy. It's not to say that you're going to find someone who's absolutely perfect. No one's perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But when you get to the place when you can think back and say, "Oh yeah, you know what was going on was absolutely unhealthy, toxic," and you know you you 
gone to them time and time again and they have said no they're not going to work on things they're not going to change you don't see anything wrong with what they're doing and you know screw you <laughs> you know and that's essentially what they're what they're saying so you know take comfort take comfort in the fact that sometimes there's nothing that you can do you can't change somebody else only God knows the uh, condition of men's hearts and the Holy Spirit's the only one that, that can change it. You know, we can encourage them, we can continue to point them to Jesus, you know, there's all types of things. We can continue to point them to the help that uh, we know that, that will be good for them. But in the end, if they continue to say no, and they say no and no and no, and, and there really isn't any reasonable expectation that they're going to have any change of heart. As a matter of fact, you see them sinking deeper and deeper into the defilement and the, the absolutely hideous and awful behavior. And it's getting worse, um, especially if you start to see it going down when he's getting more and more angry and it might physically, you know, turn into something that's physical. You know, you always deserve to remain physically safe. Um, and so, you know, if, you, if that's part of your story, if that's a part of your situation, and you're looking back now, you have some distance from it, and you're saying, oh my gosh, did I make the right decision? And you know, I've got these bills coming down on my head. You know, the kids are having a hard time adjusting. I'm having a hard time adjusting because I had to move and find a new place, and I'm just trying to get my arms around everything. And sometimes when we get a little bit distance away, we start to feel the pressure of what's going on with us now in this transitional period. Sometimes that doubt creeps in. And so just take comfort. You know, and I'm not saying you should always live in the past, but sometimes it helps a little to remember, okay, yeah, this is what I was battling back then. And even though I may have some things, you know, I may have some financial pressures, I may be having a hard time helping my kids adjust, it still would be, you know, it's still better than the alternative, which was staying in a very toxic place, getting more and more toxic, having my kids living in this toxic environment. Yeah, it's a tough ten transition, but um, you know what? I'm going to come out the side much stronger. I'm gonna come back stronger than your setback. And that's exactly what you're going to do. Come back stronger than your setback. So I hope that you find this helpful. I hope that this comforts your heart. Um, if you know of anybody who's struggling with this, you know, and, and, and saying that, you know, they have a whole lot of regret or, you know, they're just having a whole lot of doubts whether they made the right decision. And, and the bottom line is this. Hopefully this is the number one takeaway that you have. God was not going to be able to, uh, well, God can do anything. So let me, let, me, let me just rephrase that. God can do anything. But if I'm constantly standing in the way you know, of God really uh, being able to, you know, letting my ex just fall to, you know, rock bottom so that God can pick him up and mold him into the person that he always wanted him to be, then I'm the one who's standing in the way. I'm the one who's interfering. I'm the one who is always trying to soften the, the situation when God is saying, no, you know, take your hands off of this let me start to really work and take care of it. Stop jumping in the middle and trying to ease things and make things easier and um, take up a lot of the burden. No, it's, it's his journey. Stop trying to walk someone else's journey. Yeah, it's okay to walk alongside them, but if you're doing it in an unhealthy way that's um, interfering with or standing in the way of them really um, reaching a place where they they're going to reach out to God. But no, I'm always having that layer of comfort so they don't reach out to God. Then uh, that's exactly what was going on in my relationship. I was always standing, you know, jumping in the middle, always trying to ease things, always trying to um, do things for him. And God's like, no, take your hands off of this so I can work, so I can do what I need to do. Step out of the way. And so just, re just remember, you know, again, this is not for people who... Um, are still not quite sure. This is for people who have already made that decision and now are looking back and saying, mm, did I make the right decision? And so just take comfort. You know, yeah, most 99.999% of people who make the decision to break up, 
is, you know, is after a long, agonizing, a lot of self-analysis, a lot of, you know, going back and forth. Hey, Sharice, thank you for the thumbs up and the hearts. You know, it's always about that. It's, it's always a very difficult decision. It takes a lot of deliberation, a lot of um, soul searching, all of those things. It's not something you just flippantly, you know, happened overnight. It is a long process with you going through a lot of suffering, with your kids going through a lot of suffering. Um, and most of the time it's you taking up a lot more burden and a lot more responsibility in a relationship than God ever intended for you to have. And so let me just leave you with that, okay? So I hope that you find this helpful. If you know of anybody who's struggling with this, who is, you know, just agonizing, you know, wringing their hands, especially now when you have back to school, there's a lot more pressure kids trying to adjust to going back to school, you know, finances, uh, you know, money's too tight to mention. Hey, Frankie, it's good to see you. Uh, you know, money's too tight to mention. Um, you know, a lot of the pressures, a lot of times too, you're trying to get used to, if you had to move, get used to living in a new environment. A lot of times those things can really be difficult. But take heart, you know, God is with you. He knows exactly where you are. And he's walking, he's, he's gone before you to blaze the trail. He's also walking beside you, just making sure um, that he knows that you're going to make it to where he wants you to be, the plans and purposes that you have for your life, that you're going to be operating on such a higher level. You are going to be doing things that you never thought was possible. But when you partner with God, the impossible becomes possible. So I hope that you find it helpful. Okay, thank you, Sharice. Good. I'm glad you're sharing. Um, so thank you so much, ladies. Um, this is also something I help uh, folks coach on. You know, I give away so much, but this is also something that I do for a living. So you can go to my website, um, moveonafterdivorce.com, and there's a button that says one-on-one. -on -one. It's so easy to sign up. So I hope that you find it helpful. Enjoy your weekend. I think I'm going to do a video tomorrow. Uh, it'll probably won't be one of those videos about, you know, uh, crap that single women hate to do, which is like changing the you know, oil in your car. It's like, you know, trimming the hedges, stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Frankie, Cherise, and I think there may be a couple more ladies that I can't see your name right now. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Yes, you are good. You're on the other side of this. Yay. Yard work. Yes. <laughs> yes, Frankie, yard work. Oh. <laughs> All right. Take care, ladies. Bye-bye.